Welcome to the latest edition of Fitch's Virtual Investor Series. I'm Christine Yoon, Senior Director of Structured Credit. Today, I'm joined by Derek Miller, Managing Director of Structured Credit, and Luba Petrova, Senior Director of Corporate Ratings. Today, we are going to discuss CLOs and leveraged loans. So let's jump right into it. Luba, let's start off with the state of the loan capital market. What are we seeing in terms of transaction volume and deal terms? Thanks, Christine. What we're seeing today are clear indicators of a tightening credit market. The year-to-date issuance volume through August is only about 32% of the year-to-date volume in 2021. Spreads are widening and terms tend to favor lenders. The average documentation score tracked by our affiliate Covenant Review closed August at about 3.6, and that places it at the more protective end of the range. Deals are pricing at the higher end of TOC and require meaningful original issue discounts in order to clear the market. The market's reception of the term loan B for Citrix, perhaps the most anticipated deal of 2022, is indicative of the lending environment in which we are today, with its OID of 91, and lenders' ability to push back on aggressive terms such as the pick your poison provision. And let me close out by saying that the sagging secondary trading levels, the Fed hikes, and the widening spreads in 2022 have not provided for a friendly and favorable environment for refinancings. And that's going to have consequences for the maturity wall, as well as LIBOR transition. So let's switch over to the demand side of the equation, since CLOs represent over 60% of the investor base for leveraged loans. Uh, Derek, what are we seeing in uh, CLO issuance? Yeah, well, through the first half of the year, we saw CLO new issuance uh, track near levels that we saw in 2021, although we saw fewer resets and refinancings of CLO notes, and in fact, that's, that's basically dissipated to none in the third quarter of this year. We have seen uh, new issuance volumes dip in the third quarter compared to last year as well. Um, and part of that, what CLO managers have done to compensate for the, the lack of loan supply in the new issue market uh, is they use the warehouses that they had opened uh, in 2021 and in the early part of this year. They also are buying loans in the secondary market to source uh, their portfolios. Um, one of the interesting dynamics in the CLO new issuance space with the lack of demand for uh, CLO note paper uh, has been that uh, CLO portfolios have actually had to increase in credit quality um, and they've also had to increase their credit enhancement levels um, at different parts of the capital stack. So we've seen at the top of the capital stack, credit enhancement levels increased by about one percentage point from the beginning of the year. And then at the bottom of the capital stack in the double B tranches, we've seen the credit enhancement increase by about two percentage points from the beginning of the year. And all of that has been combined to offset the increased cost of funding uh, to the CLO liability structures. What about the performance of CLOs in the course of 2022? Yeah, through this year, the beginning part of the year, we saw a relatively strong performance. Beginning in April, we began to see a shift in terms of the underlying loans in CLO portfolios. We saw the, the, the downgrade uh, to upgrade ratio increase, and that's really uh, worked its way through in terms of the credit quality of the underlying portfolios. We've seen the average, weighted average uh, rating factor decline um, from about 24.9% uh, points in uh, April of this year to 25.3 points by August. Um, we've also seen um, in August and into September uh, an increase in the level of defaults that have, that have been held in CLO portfolios. So, through August and September, we saw about 70 basis points of defaults pass their way through CLO portfolios. And we expect that to have a knock-on impact in terms of over-collateralization tests and in terms of par uh, gain or losses relative to target par uh, as those work their way through the trustee reports in September. Um, but all of these elements of portfolio deterioration had to be considered in context relative to what CLOs have experienced in the past. Um, when you look at uh, the CLO credit quality from a wharf perspective, um, you have to think back to uh, June of 2020 when the average weighted average rating factor for CLO portfolios was 27. So CLOs are still performing quite re well relative to that. Uh, another metric, if you go back to June of 2020, the average CLO portfolio was 
uh, about 1.4 percentage points below target par. Uh, whereas today, CLO, the average CLO portfolio is about 70 basis points below target par. So when you consider uh, where CLOs were uh, during coronavirus, where they are today, uh, they do have a, a, a good amount of headroom to absorb losses, absorb deterioration, and still maintain uh, the cushions necessary to maintain the ratings. So let's turn to the future. Luva, uh, what is Fitch's view on recession? In its latest um, report on the global economic outlook, Fitch's economic team uh, significantly cut the forecast for U.S. and GDP growth in 2023 and also predicted a mild recession in the U.S. in 2023. Now, lower demand and demand erosion is a growing risk, and it will undoubtedly add additional strain on issuers, top lines, margins, and cash flow generation abilities. Uh, which sectors are most impacted? We assess the sector's vulnerability to four main risks, demand erosion, inflation, supply chain issues, and diminishing pricing power. Now, let me start with the sectors that are most relevant for CLOs, namely business services, tech, and healthcare. Their vulnerability to the four risks I outlined earlier is assessed to be minimal to moderate and manageable for 2022, 2023, and 2024. In terms of the sectors that have a higher vulnerability to the four risks, here we identified airlines, home builders, and building materials. Their vulnerability is assessed to be generally moderate, and we expect that the credit metrics are going to remain appropriate for the, for the ratings. It's also worth pointing out that altogether these three sectors represent just under 6% of CLO holdings. In other words, their relative vulnerability is not expected to have a material impact on CLO performance. Great. This would be a good segue to our next topic, defaults. What are our expectations for loan defaults? Fitch's default forecast is par weighted. In other words, um, we are focused on uh, the amounts of debt rather than issuer count. We expect that the loan default uh, rate is going to close 2022 at about 1.5%. We're updating our default forecast for 2023, and we expect that the sectors that will be the primary uh, contributors of default volume are going to be broadcasting and media with Diamond Sports and Telecom with Avaya. If you uh, track back historically um, a comparison between the broad market loan default rate and the default rate within the CLOs, you will see that the latter is uh, higher than um, the CLO default rate. This is because CLOs are actively managed portfolios and the CLO managers are very adept at managing away from adverse situations. Derek, what level of portfolio deterioration can CLOs withstand before their note ratings are changed? I think it's important to note when you're thinking about rating changes on CLO notes that Fitch's rating methodology for ratings on existing CLO notes is going to be focused in on the performance of the loan portfolio. So the performance of the loan portfolio can be driven by three significant factors. So one would be defaults, uh, which is going to introduce losses into the portfolio. Uh, the, the second would be uh, trading uh, gains or losses by the manager. And then the third would be rating activity on the underlying loans or the issuers of the loans themselves. Um, so with that, um, we focus in on the, the modeling analysis and the level of de additional defaults or the level of deterioration that can occur in the portfolios while CLO note ratings can maintain their ratings. And that's going to vary depending upon where you're at in the capital structure. So obviously lower rated CLO notes are going to have less room to absorb losses or deterioration and maintain their ratings while, while higher ratings will have more room. Um, for instance, when looking at the average triple B CLO note rating that Fitch maintains, um, we actually see uh, those CLO notes can withstand 11.6% of defaults, assuming about a 70% recovery, um, and still maintain their CLO uh, rating of triple B. Now that equates to about 3.5% loss. Um, when you go up in the capital structure to triple A notes, they, on average, can withstand about 15.8% of defaults, assuming a 40% recovery, which means they can withstand portfolio losses of 9.5% and still maintain a AAA rating. Now, when you look at the, the bottom performing AAA and B notes that Fitch rates, so the bottom fifth percentile, uh, 
those triple B notes can withstand a little bit less than two percentage points of portfolio loss and maintain their rating, while the bottom fifth percentile triple A note ratings that Fitch maintains can withstand about six and a half percentage points of portfolio deterioration while they still can maintain their triple A ratings. Thank you for your insights, Derek and Luba. And thank you for joining us. For more information on structured credit, please visit FitchRatings.com. If you have any questions on the topics we discussed, please send an email to the address on the screen. Thank you for watching.